Hey guys, welcome back, and I have another guide for beginners on how to be more efficient in King of Avalon. Today I'm going to be covering the dragon, and I will be covering everything except emblems and draconic speech, because there's enough content for both of those individually to make a separate video. Now, I want to get a couple notes out of the way. All the stats gained from your dragon will only be active when your dragon's with your march or at your castle when you're being attacked. There's a couple ways to get around this. One is the dragon shadow. The Dragon Shadow allows you to essentially summon a Dragon clone that provides the exact same benefits as your Dragon. There's a big downside to this, and that is that it's paid for only, and it costs $4.99 for one hour. But it is very versatile because you can either send the Dragon on another march, so you have two Dragon marches going, or you can have a Dragon at home and another marching, whatever you want to do with your second Dragon. The second way you can get around it is the Dragon Blade, which you can find by going to your profile and going to the relics that you can buy. And here you can see you can buy it for 21,000 gold for seven days or 90,000 gold for 30 days. Now, the Dragon Blade isn't as versatile as the Dragon Shadow because it only gives your city your dragon's buffs when you're not, when it's not there. But the stat bonuses it gives are a nice plus, And since it can be bought with gold, you can technically get this for free if you just save up your gold. Now I just want to look at my stats compared with my dragon and without my dragon. And the screenshots you can see here, the left you can see the stat numbers I have with my dragon, and the right is without it. This is two minutes apart from each other, and I do two attacks with everything else the same besides my dragon being with the march. I hope that just by looking at this, it's obvious to see why the dragon is so important. I lose 300% on my infantry, bowmen, and cavalry stats, and 200% on my troop stats. It's a huge difference. And this is why you want to make a good dragon starting early on. And besides that, you completely lose the troop specific damage and damage reduction stats, which are huge and make a big difference later on in the game. Now that we got the reason why the dragon is important out of the way, I want to cover the dragon star level. You can access your dragon star level information by going to nurture and evolve. From here, you can increase the dragon star level by using flame orbs. You can get these by clearing slash reclaiming areas early on in the game. Um, completing your Kingdom Quest, completing Path of Legend, and completing stages for events, and placing high in certain rankings for events. Now I really want to reiterate because these are really hard to come by, so whenever there's an event with them, try your best to get the rewards. What increasing this does is one, makes your dragon look a lot more badass, and then it also gives you these bonus stats right here, which are nice to have, and up to level 5 you get troop attack, troop health and troop defense and then after star level five you also get army damage and army damage received stat bonuses the last thing that increasing your dragon star level does is increase the max level your dragon can be which is what i want to talk about next dragon level can be accessed from the nurture screen as well and you increase this by using meat yes meat you cannot buy this so everybody is on an even playing field you can acquire meat in a couple ways the main ways would be killing troops with your dragon in a march, Path of Legend in the Legend Shop, the Labyrinth, and Spire Stores when they open. Increasing your dragon level does four things. It levels up his primary skill, which I will show you in a second. It gives you these troop stat bonuses, 1% per level, and you unlock new skills. So let's run over the skills real quick. So your primary skill is this right here, Heart of the Wild, which gives you... Troop March Speed, Resource Gathering Speed, Monster March Speed, and Troop Load to marches that have your dragon with them. The next thing would be is each one of these skills is attacked at a different level. Infantry Backbone against Archers is unlocked at level 3. Flaming Arrows is unlocked at level 5. Um, infantry versus Cavalry, I believe. No, no, it's Cavalry Call. Sorry, my bad. I have to remember what level is. Um, this is unlocked at level 8, Infantry Backbone unlocked at level 10, Dragon Blessing unlocked at 12, March of Fury 15, Cavalry Claw against Bowman level 25, and Flaming Arrow at 27 for Cavalry. These last four skills that I haven't talked about are unlocked a lot later on, so I'm not going to cover them in a beginner guide because it just would lead to more confusion. By leveling up a dragon, you also unlock higher max level for these skills. 
So after you unlock them, you I believe it's one level per dragon level that you can max these skills at, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Now while we're here, let's talk about the skills themselves. Each skill has two important variables, the level and its start level. So you can access the dragon, the skill level by clicking the skill and clicking upgrade. Skills are upgraded by using dragon exp, which is acquired the exact same way as meat. Killing troops with your dragon, path of legends and legend shop, and labyrinth store when it opens up, as well as the spire store when it opens up. However, there's one note to when leveling up your skills for your dragon is if you can upgrade your dragon layer, always do so before upgrading skills. Every level decreases a uh, cost for dragon exp by half a percent, and it will save you some exp in the long run. Now, evolving skills is a little more complicated. It's unlocked after your dragon reaches level 30, and what it does is, basically, if you click on Evolve, it increases the base value of the skill by a certain percentage. So, for example, here we have at 4, 30% increase, and if I were to level up to 5, it would be 42% increase. You use Intensity Crystals to evolve dragon skills, and you need 10 of the crystal of the next tier to evolve the skill. These crystals can be acquired in a couple ways, um, the Lion Store, certain events, and purchasing them. However, there's a cool thing about the Intensity Crystals that if you go to them in your inventory, I gotta find one, all right, here they go, you can synthesize, and if you have eight of a lower tier, you can combine them to make one of the higher tier, so they're not just wasting space in your inventory. Up to now, I've done a lot of talking and just thrown a lot of information at you, but I haven't really told you how to get a strong dragon, so that's what this next half of the video is going to be about. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the order in which you should focus these skills, and the order in which you should level them up, and the order in which you should evolve them. And the single most important skill here, in my opinion, and many other people's opinions, is the infantry versus um, bowman damage reduction. And this is because the meta for the game right now, Bowman damage is the main damage that most people use. And since your infantry dies first, this will help protect them and help them live longer and you'll lose less troops in the long run. The next one is the opposite of that is you want to kill your enemy's infantry. So we're gonna, you're going to want the Bowman versus infantry damage increase, which is the flaming arrows. So this is the second best skill to increase in my opinion. and it makes bowman killing other infantry faster, and faster infantry death means a faster fight is over, which means less deaths for you. After that, the next three kind of depend on your playstyle and how you feel about what you want to do. So these three are all kind of in the same tier of importance to me. The first one in this tier is cavalry versus infantry damage. It's the same type of situation as the uh, bowman versus infantry. However, this depends on if you have good cavalry damage and if you use a lot of cavalry in your formation regularly. If not, it's not the best because cavalry damage can be underwhelming sometimes. The next one would be wounded conversion, and this is a good stat to, stat, good stat to have that saves you resources in the long run, and it's always worth upgrading because it saves your troops from being lost forever. However, upgrading the other skills can help you not lose as many troops in the first place and be more effective than converting them after they're dead. And the last skill in this category is March Capacity. So March Capacity just essentially means having a bigger march. And this will give you an advantage against someone who has the exact same stats as you. And having a bigger march just gives you more damage per round because of more troops. It's always great to increase. The next tier of skills in my opinion would be the infantry versus cavalry damage reduction and bowman versus cavalry damage so same thing with the bowman i mean bowman damage reduction this reduces damage your infantry take from cavalry and unless there's somebody who's really focusing on cavalry stats this isn't really the the meta of the game right now so it's not as important as reducing damage from bowman but same with the bowman here. If you want your bowman to kill more cavalry faster and cause you to lose less infantry, it's a good stat. However, this completely depends on heroes and other opponents in the kingdom, what they're planning and what they're doing. The last skill I have in this 
tier list. And the last one we haven't talked about is cavalry versus bowman damage. Now this one can be really strong when paired with the right heroes. They're unlocked later in the game and they're just not worth mentioning right now because it's several weeks down the line. And having the right troop tier matchup, this will let your cavalry hit your bowmen, hit your mini bowmen and wipe them out really easily. But it's so situational and though it can be really strong, it makes the bottom of my list because of just how situational it is. Now to close out this video, I want to talk about just things you should be doing to make sure your dragon is as strong as possible. The first thing is to always get on and go ahead and clear your path of legend. Now the reason why is even if you clear one a stage or two stages a day, that's more points you get per to every 10 minutes per hour that you can use at the legend shop to buy meat, to buy skill EXP. And this is how you're going to get ahead on your dragon. Just every day you want to buy as much skill EXP and meat as you can. But the question is, do you want skill EXP or do you want meat? And I'll talk about, based off your playstyle in a little bit, which one you should prefer. But just know you should always be buying as much as you can every day. Now, another comment is, early on when you can still buy resources here, don't do it. It's a waste, and resources will always be around, and by not buying them, you'll get ahead of dragon stats compared to players who are buying them here. So start buying this meat and EXP here as often and as frequently as you can, and as early on as you can. The next thing to make sure you have a really strong dragon compared to everybody else is as soon as you can buy Intensity Crystals at the Lion's Store, buy them all. Doesn't matter if you're not level 30, just buy them all in stockpile. And what's going to happen is as soon as you hit 30, you will end up being so much more prepared and so much further ahead of everybody else who didn't plan ahead. And you'll receive a good stat bonus as soon as your dragon hits 30. It'll be a giant leap. and It's a power spike. Now, those are the two things you really should focus on early on. Now, whether you want to do dragon level or dragon skills because you're only going to be able to buy so much that's really up to you if you are an aggressive player and you're going to be doing a lot of attacking focus on your dragon level getting your dragon level up is going to unlock new skills it's going to unlock better stats and it'll just help you be more aggressive now for more defensive players you want to focus on the dragon skills you know because you unlock the skills that are really important to fence the infantry damage reduction and the bow in against infantry damage really early on and it's best to focus on those if you're a defensive player and you want to play safe and comfortable so buy the skill xp instead and then fill up with the meat other than that that's all i really have for this video and i hope this helped if you have any questions let me know this ran longer than i was expecting and i try to speed it up but there's not really much you can cut out without being efficient and mentioning everything that needs to be mentioned so if you have any other questions, let me know. If this helped, subscribe, leave a like, share it with a friend, and I'll see you next time.